That's right, videos by bikers for bikers. Ryan Erlacher here with lawabidingbiker.com. Thanks for checking in. Today, we are gonna give you another free tutorial video on how to install uh, docking hardware uh, for a detachable passenger backrest. We did it on this 2012 Road King behind me and we're gonna share it with you guys. Enjoy. So what you're looking at here is a four point detachable docking hardware kit. We're gonna put it on a 2012 Road King today. And basically what this docking hardware kit is for once we get it mounted on the bike is so that you can have a detachable passenger backrest removable and uh, you can take it on and off with ease whenever you want. So you're looking at the docking plate there that comes with the kit and all the parts. You notice on the front of that plate, there's a longer stud and on the back, there's a shorter stud, and that's going to come into play as a little bit as we start putting the components on it here. First thing you're going to look at is the uh, docking point, they call it, or you can call it a grommet. I don't really care. Uh, it's the cylindrical object there. It's got a hard plastic coating. Before we put that on the back stud, we're going to actually put a washer, and then he'll go ahead and slip that on. And then he's going to do the same thing on that long front stud. However, on the longer stud, there's a spacer a metal spacer that goes first. So you're gonna go washer, and then he's gonna go spacer, and then the docking point. All right, and then there's a couple small screws, and in the kit, you take those small screws, put a washer on it, some high strength thread lock of your choice, the brand, they're all the same, really doesn't matter. And uh, he'll put that on there, the dab will do you on this stuff, guys. And once you get some lock that on that, you'll see he'll just go ahead and secure both of those screws down and secure everything you just put on each of those metal studs and they're calling for 17 foot pounds uh, if you want to get technical and use a torque wrench we have one but we're not going to use it we're just going to crank them down good and tight and call it good and these are t27 torques and you can see he's got a t-handle torques there which are real handy to crank all this down and of course there's a docking uh, plate for both sides and that's what we're going to finish up now. It goes together the same exact way. First thing you're going to need to do is grab a Torx T40 and remove that stock strut bolt right in the center there. We're actually going to set that aside. It will not be reused for this project. The kit actually comes with three of these uh, for each side. In the kit you put a washer on each one all right, you've got the docking plate there, and there's three of these bolts, of course. A washer goes on the far side there, and also a washer on the inside of each one. And you'll see those stock holes in the strut there, in the chrome. Those nipples are actually going to line up and go right in those holes that he's pointing at there. Getting a washer on each side, and then you want to put high-strength Loctite on each one of these, and again, a dab will do. You guys don't need to gob these things. Just a little bit, we'll lock it in there. Put it right along the threads, like so. Now he's gonna go ahead and line the plate up and get those nipples and the holes and all that. This takes just a little finesse, guys, because those washers on the backside just barely fit through those holes in the strut, but there, as you can see, he just finessed it, got it in there. Now he's gonna go ahead and crank all of these down and if you want to get torque specifications, it's 17 pounds, foot pounds. We're just gonna use a wrench. I'm not gonna get the torque wrench out for this project. We're gonna crank them down good and tight and maybe another quarter turn. They have Loctite on them, so you should be fine. And you'll note that the longer stud with the plastic grommet goes on the front, you can see there, and on the rear is that shorter stud, so it doesn't matter which way it goes on here. Hopefully you're enjoying the video. If you wanna make sure that content and these free videos keep coming your way, there is a way you can support us. Head over to lawabidingbiker.com slash Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. The community is growing over there. We'd like to have you involved too. Um, there's no risk over there. You can sign up for a certain level um, and pay a certain amount per piece of content with a cap. Absolutely no risk. There are some benefits over there. Um, T-shirts and a private Facebook group and some premium content. All depends on what level you sign up as but that is a way that you can assure the content keeps coming your way. Lawabidingbiker.com slash Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. 
Of course, if you ever want to just leave a flat donation, we do accept that too and appreciate it. Lawabidingbiker.com slash donate. Don't forget to check out that weekly podcast, guys. It's on fire. Ton of content we're putting out. Get involved over there. It's a Law Abiding Biker podcast. All right, let's get back into your video. So just doing the other side real quick here. Same exact thing, getting rid of the strut bolt. And uh, he'll get the plate up there, get all the thread lock on there, the washers in place, and we'll seat that one. And he's just finishing up the last bolt. He'll crank that down again, 17 pounds if you want to get your torque wrench out. Just going to get all these secure, and then he'll finish them off and get them good and tight. So what you're looking at here is the passenger backrest kit uh, that's going to go ahead and work with the docking hardware we just put on. This is gloss black. You can also get it in chrome, of course. And then the actual pad is there. And as you can see, there's three holes. He's already placed two spacers in two of the holes. He's going to put the third spacer that comes with this kit in that hole. It comes with a chrome plate or black plate, depending on your taste. And the way this works is it's got three bolts, and now it's just going to go right down through those spacers and into the threaded holes that are already in that pad. And the way it works is this plate will just actually suck the sissy bar and the pad together. This is a four millimeter hex head. If you have a T-handle or uh, just a regular socket, doesn't matter, but it is four millimeter hex head or Allen, if you're more familiar with that. And it calls for 60 inch pounds if you were to want to use a torque wrench. Not really necessary. We're not going to get the torque wrenches out for this. Uh, but 60 inch pounds isn't a lot. So we're going to crank them down, suck them down real good. Um, and then maybe another turn, three quarters turn to turn, something like that. But don't overdo it, guys. As long as the pad seems like it's secure, then you've probably pushed it far enough. And you can see as he's tightening there, it's actually, you can see the indent in the pad. So that's definitely getting sucked down in there. You could strip these out, guys. So again, don't overdo it. All right, and once everything's all put together, of course, it's simply the uh, passenger backrest goes right on and those front horseshoes there, so to speak, go right over the shocks, that stock. There's little channels there. And then, of course, it just the backrest will just lock down right on there with the mechanisms that are on it. And it locks down and then it uh, just comes off real easy too. Now you see the back ones there too. That will be for an additional luggage rack. That's why we got the four point docking system because we can actually put an additional luggage rock rack on back. You can also just get two point. If the only thing you're ever gonna do is just do a passenger backrest, you can just get a two point docking hardware kit. 